All right. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to our spiritual talk. Um, I'm here with my friend Brigitta. We're really excited. This is our second collaboration, and um, we wanna we have a few interesting topics that we want to talk about. But I'm sure more will flow. It seems like when we when we have these videos that we make together, it, it we have a set amount of topics that we like to talk about, but so much more involves. Yeah. Um, so one of the things we want to talk about is spiritual gifts. Um, kind of not just how to hone into your spiritual gifts, but how different they can be for every person. Um, and how that's kind of tied into your soul's purpose and tied into your unique, unique expression. Um, another thing we want to talk about is blockages that we could be holding, but also how if we're not manifesting something that we're trying to manifest, um, how maybe it's not a blockage, maybe it's kind of tied in more to perfect timing and trusting and surrendering because me and Brigitte both, as well as I'm sure a lot of you watching, we can put so much, so much pressure on ourselves um you know and and we want to talk about that we want to talk about taking that pressure off and getting into the flow state of trusting and um, kind of understanding the difference between a blockage and um you know other other things that it could be besides that um so thanks for joining us um so brigitta and i are both tarot readers for those of you that are new to the channel um but we like to host these spiritual talks so do you want to do you want to introduce yourself a little bit more Okay, so um, I am a, also a tarot reader, a medium, and it's interesting how Megan has suggested this topic because just yesterday I have spoken with one of my clients about, I think an expression such like spiritual authenticity is a really good one, you know, like be authentic to yourself, but also kind of a lot of people I think think that there are certain things that you have to do or certain ways you have to go about it. Like, especially I notice it in mediumship um, talks too, when people think it has to come through a certain way, you know, or when reading tarot it has to come through a certain or you have to read cards a certain way. And I think more people should be talking about it because I used to notice, especially in the past, how uh, some people would comment down below saying, hey, but in this uh, spread, the high priestess doesn't mean that, or, you know, the hierophant doesn't mean that. And then people start correcting other people, and this is all about the intuitive part of yours. Like, you can pick up the hierophant from your own experiences, you know. If you kept seeing the hierophant in one, you know, aspect in your life, you'd pick that up a bit differently and interpret it differently than some other people would. And I think same goes like tarot decks. So every tarot deck, I tend to see them as having different personalities. So Hierophant in one deck is not going to be the same one for me, at least, as Hierophant in a completely different other deck. So what yeah. we'd like to talk about is, um, oh, there's a lot. Even when choosing a spiritual teacher or a mentor, I would suggest choosing people who always remind you at the end of a session to not take everything that they said on board 100% to keep your own authenticity flowing. Mm -hmm. And you have to be open to what it is that you are capable of because not every single person is capable of uh, all the same things, truly, right? And I think it's important to bring that out of you. If you want to, let's say, throw the deck on the floor and pick up the cards that the first you saw first, like, do your own thing, you know? Right, right. Whatever works for you. I love that. And, and something that you said as well just now kind of reminded me of another topic I think we should touch on, which is kind of about the spiritual community is such a beautiful place and you can meet so many beautiful souls. But like with any community, with any kind of group or anything like that, you can you can find people that can, um, I, don't, I don't know the right word, uh, but can kind of like uh, pressure you or make you think what you're thinking is wrong because they've they've come to believe something and it's worked so well for them that people feel like they have to know, like, I have to tell them, like, this is the right way, wh whether it's reading tarot or, like, you know, eating a plant-based diet or, um, you know, doing a certain meditation. People have, have adapted certain uh, habits that work so well for them. So sometimes people can get a little aggressive and a little too excited and push their beliefs, you know, and that can kind of that can kind of mess with you because you're like, and this happened recently. And I, I kind of want to share this example because oh, this really? is something that, yeah, that happened for me. And, 
And it wasn't the person that shared this information. They weren't, you know, aggressive or pressured or, you know, it was, it was very genuine. I could tell, but it did trigger me okay. being, being an intuitive because, um, she had said something like, you know, if you're going to get a psychic reading, if you're going to get a tarot reading or, you know, meet with a medium that you, if, if you're meeting with that person, you as the client, as the one purchasing the reading, you know, you shouldn't be talking much. Like that person should be doing all the talking. Um, you know, they should be the one that's like that channeling. If, if you're talking a lot, then they can kind of like pick up your energy and they can kind of like manipulate stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of like, wait a minute, like <laughs> my readings are so different than that because I value so much having like a, a full on conversation. And, and I've seen the importance of people in my readings that need to speak their truth. So, so watching her say that was kind of like, wait, what are you talking about? Do not tell people this because this isn't, you know, that's not how I, I read it. So it kind of made me a little, I wasn't mad at her, but it, it triggered me. Right. Yeah. And, um, I had to take a step back and really think about it for a while because that's her truth and that's what works for her. And, and she's trying to help people. And, and for some channelers, I know, um, especially like mediums, some of them do just talk and they don't ask any questions. They don't, have a full on conversation, but with other readers and other people, it can be more of a die, like more, more of a two way conversation. So, so it's just so different for every person. You know, the way it's, this person, um, sounds, um, a little bit like someone who has gone through maybe, uh, fake psychics or had really mm-hmm. bad experiences or people around them. And now it becomes not a reading or it is more so like a text, you know, you book a reading and like, ah, what are you going to tell me? I'm not going to tell you anything. If you truly come in with an open heart, some people, if you, I don't know if you've noticed, some people just want to talk and lead the conversation mm-hmm. and they would want you to pick on certain things and then information, you know, and the conversation goes from there. So there's also different clients that you have, you know, some people don't talk at all like for, for me what I've noticed some people don't talk at all and I choose, like for me I like to start off with the energies I think that's what you do too mm-hmm. so hi yeah. there I'm just gonna check on your energies now and we're gonna kind of talk later so I like to tune in even before I think I watched the video with you you've done with one person where you, ah, you both did a reading for each other was it oh, was it Kino yeah yeah and you something I really like that chat you mentioned something um before we started recording I have pre-pulled cards and now when I started doing the Skype readings which is quite recently because I really want to communicate with people and see their faces I got fed up you know seeing a name and here you go yeah. there's your so um I have noticed that I do that too just to take my time with myself before the reading starts because, you know, tech can be a little bit of a distraction too, you know, we talking, for me how it works, I need to tune in before we talk, you know, before yeah. I even see the camera. So yeah. there are different also ways of reading tarot. Some people do it more like a intuitive counseling. Some other people do it more so like ch- proper channeling. I'm just going to tell you what I see. Uh, I think, again, this is that authenticity, you know. And if you come into a tarot reader, uh, with this intention of I want to test them, then don't expect a really good outcome from it because you're not going to want to even dig deep. And I've noticed that even between my friends, I think a couple of years ago, uh, most of my friends are guys. And I remember, you know, I had to tell them that I'm doing tarot and, you know, I wouldn't tell everyone, but they were very open about it. And uh, I remember there were two guys and both of them are twins. And one of them said, oh my God, Rita, this is amazing. I was like, do you want a reading? Because I'm still practicing, you know, kind of, well, for you guys, I'm just going to do it. But for, let's see, you know, let's see. And he took that reading. He's like, I can't believe you saw so much about this person. He was asking about someone else just from the cards. And then the other uh, twin, he was more so very, you know, straightforward, like logical, you know, and he would be a little bit more closed off, but he was still open enough to have a reading then. Mm-hmm. And um, I told him that there is romance in the air in the future. And it's obviously up to you how you're going to take it. And straight away, he was like, so tell me what exactly it is. Am I going to kiss? Am I going to get laid? Am I going to, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, 
the details. Yeah. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, if you did go on a date and he's not the guy, you see, for someone else, it would be just, okay, I'm just, I'm just meeting someone. This is normal. For him, he's super picky. To go on a date, this is a miracle, you know, because he's such a princess. So he went on, he's like, but you know, Brigitte, I'm not dating them. I'm like, I didn't say that you're going to date them. <laughs> so we do have two different types of people who want to either test you or play kind of game. And we have those who are very like genuinely, they would even sometimes interpret things on their own. And I'm like, okay, this is my job, you know, <laughs> leave it to me. But some people like to get included in the, in the whole reading process. So, and I, and I love that because sometimes while I'm, because I think of, I think you think this too of yourself, we're, we're guides, right? We're not, we are teachers, but you're your own best teacher. And we know that and we're promoting that. And, and sometimes when you can guide someone in the right direction um, and then they start to talk, they, they start to teach themselves. And I just see these light bulbs go off and yeah. you know, they haven't had that free space of, of, you know, being in that safe space to be able to express themselves in this unique way and, and talk about certain things that maybe they can't with their family or their friends and yeah. and when they can the, the information that flows out of them i just get so excited because i can see that like they've never said this or even thought mm -hmm. this before and just a powerful shift happens and i'm like you did that like i guided you like i i gave you a space where you could freely you know speak your truth and now you you're saying what your soul has been trying to tell you and i think that's those are my favorite moments in my readings <laughs> you did it you know and I think, you know, that saying a, a healer, um, I don't remember how it's, how it's said properly, but something along the lines, uh, a true healer is not about healing you, but a true healer will spark something in you to heal, for you to heal yourself. And it's all about that, honestly, you know, it's going to, um, even if you went to the most, let's say the best shaman in the world, you still have to put in the work and it's not about the external powers you know it's all about you taking it out of me and i'm like okay i have this oh, i can do so much now you know and then you, yeah. you kind of take that power and you you go with it yeah it's empowering empowering others yeah and that is why i think uh, that authenticity is also important when you choose a tarot reader or a medium or a healer of some sorts Feel their vibe, you know, you will be vibing with certain people who are going to be helping you out in also a certain manner, you know. So what you need, you're going to have it. The same way, like, why we vibe, you know, because we probably had similar experiences. We see things in a similar way. And um, if you are going to be also teaching people, let's say one day, you're going to, um, I think you teach as you do readings either way, but if you wanted to teach other people to, you know, tarot or whatever that would be. Have you started, by the way? I didn't even ask. Have I started teaching tarot? Yeah. Oh, you mean like a tarot course? Yeah. No, I have not. No, no. Okay. I'm still thinking about it. I still don't. It's a lot of work, I feel like. If I did it, I'd want to do it 100%. I have been thinking about maybe doing a small video, just like a, like a 20 or 30 minute video for my channel, like just simple steps to help enhance your practice. Yeah. You know, I have been thinking about that versus like a full on course. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to notice like every person will come to you with already like a um, box of tools that they have, you know, intuition and some of them will be clairvoyant mm -hmm. and every person that is why I think you would love that because every person who comes to me to learn, they already have that authenticity in them. So for me, I just need to take that from them and say, hey, you know, use more of that or that works for you better. So that is why I think you would be great at that because you can also pick up certain things and the same video will not work the same way for everyone. You know what I mean? That's it's true. So free so video. Okay, so you're saying you work on with clients one on one, helping them learn yeah. tarot. Yeah. Oh, I didn't think yeah. about it doing like that because I guess you know there's another tarot reader I follow, and she's putting out a course where she can teach like. But I never thought about doing like a one on one session, and I I like that idea. Yeah, I think you'd love that. Yeah. And even you know, the a lot of people will have a lot of spiritual questions too, and you're gonna notice already 
Some people have questions about what is it at all. You know, some other people are like, okay, I met someone. Is that okay for me to do a reading for them? You know, about third party readings, for example. Can I actually ask about it? So there's a lot of information that comes through, I think, that not only touches you, but that other person. And yeah, and that's why I touched on that authenticity because every person, I have the same like kind of course for everyone, but always they lead that course. Uh, for me because I have to use different traits and kind of you know different tools for them and it's beautiful to see because everyone has a completely different style I think I'm gonna start doing that I really like that <laughs> <laughs> I almost forgot we're making a video I'm like are we just talking <laughs> yeah um cool thank you for that oh Brigitte is always inspiring me. You're always inspiring me. So. You always inspire me. I like I love watching your your videos. Every time you collab with someone, I'm like, okay, let's listen. So what is that? <laughs> Thank you. I know I love doing these. They're they're so fun, and I always learn something myself, um, which is so beautiful. There's always like like right now, I'm like, oh, I can teach tarot like that. Of course you can. But you know, sometimes you're you get you get in a certain mindset about little things, and you just that's why I love communicating with other spiritual, you know, people because they help shift your mind and get it out of the box because we put our, even mm -hmm. though I'm an open-minded thinker and I, I, I believe I think out of the box, I feel like with different topics, we can, we can get stuck. Yeah. It's funny because we're talking about authenticity and you already thought that a lot of people do it certain way, you know, so you didn't probably think of a different way of doing a, a, teaching right because everyone usually has a course and you go buy it and you know it's for more people so coming back to authenticity <laughs> I know, it's so true i know and maybe i'll figure it like now that my mind's opened i'll maybe i'll think of a whole different way to do it i, think like, so. I don't know yeah cool i love it learning every day <laughs> so yeah. um let's get back to um the topic well we kind of touched on this but i feel like there's more to explore about the pressures in the spiritual community because you know this has to do with our um, authenticity and, uh, and our gifts but like it can be with diet it can be with how we communicate with others it can be how we build our business you know i think it's important whenever somebody's sharing information to just take it but take it you know with a grain of salt don't say okay this person's successful i have to do everything like this person um you know because they have proof that they've They've, you know, they found their soul's purpose. They have their soulmate. They, you know, yeah. they have a successful business. I'm just going to copy them. It, it's okay to take up bits and pieces and say, oh, maybe I'll try it and see if what they worked works for me. But not thinking like, this is the only way. Mm -hmm. This is how I have to do it. Um, you know, I think, it, and when people, sometimes when people will like comment, you know, on something that you do on social media or, um, and they'll say, oh, it's the, actually this way or that way. And, and don't, you know, they're, they're projecting, they're, even though it seems like it might come from a place of like, you know, a <laughs> negative place, like they're trying to correct me or tell me what to do. I feel like most people in the spiritual, spiritual community do help people from a place of love, but they're still dealing with their own traumas. They're still healing. So, so sometimes it can be, it can be triggering for us, or it can be projected in that sort of way where we're like, oh, I'm doing this wrong. Like, Oh, I, I need to do it better. I need to, you know, thank you for, or you might say thank you for helping me, but maybe what, the way you were doing it wasn't wrong. Maybe it was just, it was beautiful and perfect for the time that you did it. And maybe you switch it. Maybe you keep going in the same direction, you know, really feeling intuitively into it. You know, is this, is this going to serve me and, and make and help me? Or is this going to, you know, put too much stress on me? Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. And you know, when you are talking and about people correcting other people, I do tend to see those who correct other people as, um, I call them interns in spirituality still, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. they, they haven't gone to that point just yet. They only know so much and yeah. they will apply only that much. I think spirituality as well as, you know, some people say, music um, taste has no friends or you know design taste has no friends so it's very similar in this case i believe but overall i don't know if you've noticed so the more mature teacher you speak to the more careful they are about expressing their opinion on something especially when it comes to teaching you now i'm talking to i'm going to be talking to a medium who's been doing that for 25 or 27 years now 
Um, by the way, I don't know if you know about that college, but I think you're going to be interested. Um, I'm just going to look it up very quickly. It's called, um, some people call it Cambridge of Spirituality. Some other people call it the Hogwarts, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like a school? What is yeah. This? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, just very quickly. Okay, let me go through. It's called Arthur Findlay College. So I'm going to show it on the screen. It's the oldest, I think, spiritual college. Mm. Here it is. And it okay. looks like a castle. It does. And this is one of the, uh, well, as far as I know, people from all over the world travel to that college. You can also have accommodation there, stay for six days. So let's say, this is more so focused on mediumship though. So I booked a assessment with a medium too, and I paid attention to how she speaks to me, you know? And she would reassure me like from time to time, she was very assertive. She picked everything up that I needed. Assessment is more so like uh, what it is that you still need to focus on, what, it, what kind of guide that she may pick up, you know, what you work with, what kind of energies and so on. And she'd assess you as a medium too. So she was like from time to time reassuring, saying, by the way, you know, um, due to this and due to that, you don't have to believe in certain things. Even the way she would give me advice, she would come from both places. So the, the more experienced, the more careful people are of not putting their opinions on you in a way. And it shows, you know, so that's why I call those spiritual people who try to advise only from one point, you know, as interns, because they didn't get there just yet, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, that's so true. Because they have a, you know, a limited perspective, which is still a very beautiful perspective. It's a, it's very healing. And I'm sure it's very helpful for a lot of people. But it is it can be limited when you think. Um, and I think another thing too that um, touching on that, when people try to share their gifts, or maybe like, speak up on their platform, whether it's like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, I think when you start to open up your perspective, when you want to share something, you can start to see the different perspectives that will be reacted to your information. So, so you'll see, okay, maybe somebody will think this and somebody will think that, or, or somebody will take this and, and think that, but somebody else will think that. And it can kind of be overwhelming. And I think sometimes when you get to that point, you kind of have to like, call, like I have to calm the mind because I'll, I'll rewatch a video that I'll make and, and I, I see how, how like five different people could, could, you know, pick up on that one sentence and, and while that's a powerful thing, it can be too much and it can kind of make me feel like, oh, I need to, you know, I shouldn't have said it like that or, or I, maybe I should have done it like that instead. And, and that can be also, also too much. So it's kind of like having that open perspective is beautiful, but at the same time, it can be, it can be a lot. And I feel like it's about acclimating to that energy and being able to like balance that energy. Yeah, but well, you know, as well, like, I, I believe in this, I really don't know, like, for me, I, have you noticed this snowflake type of energy going on right now, where everyone gets offended by anything, really, like, I don't like your shoes, I'm offended, like, for me, yeah. that's something that I really, really don't like, because we lose, people are gonna lose their own authenticity, like, you can't be yourself, because you're going to offend someone by being you, and I think that shouldn't be a case when you, when you told me the story, like, I think you should speak your truth because then your tribe is your tribe, right? And if you believe that there are like really strong three different interpretations, the only thing that you can do is just to give an example, you know? And I sometimes, even my readings, I, I see a story very clearly, but then I'm like, oh, but someone's going to put words in my mouth. So I say it, yeah. you know, like, yeah. you know, this is not the case. This is the case, you know, what I'm talking about. So I don't kind of give out the mixed message you know I had to think a story that was very similar to someone really needed help in one of the piles and that person has gone through quite a lot and somehow that story was very pure and very nice you know these two people had a very nice energy about them but then I pulled back and I was like oh geez if someone is in abusive toxic toxic relationship right um, this is not a good message because they will give, give, yeah. give. So I have to pull back. I'm like, by the way, this is not the right. message, right? <laughs> yeah, I do that too. I do that too. 
And I think some, and then sometimes that's good because I feel like spirits like, okay, you need to explain it because when we do the pick a card, there's, you know, hundreds, thousands of people watching them. So it's, it is going to be different for each, for each person. Um, but also like discerning the difference between, you know, giving that ex- extra explanation, but be- between that and being defensive, you yeah. know, about speaking our truth, because I, I sometimes have a hard time deciphering, you know, the difference because it's important for us you know, to explain well and and communicate properly. But then sometimes if we're speaking our truth, but we're like, we get scared and we feel like we need to defend everything, Mm -hmm. um, then it, then it can be, I don't know, then it can be stressful, right? (laughs) And a lot of people, I don't know if you've noticed since last year, had to take breaks from, um, social platforms, especially you influencers and all those people, because everyone gets offended by anything now, you know, and there's so much pressure on them. And this is actually, you know, that cancel culture too, like this is becoming out of hands. And I truly don't think we should be digging that deep into things because this can be very unhealthy for both parties. I did have a person ages ago, I believe, when I I have made a couple of t-shirts, my tribe is dope. And uh, I really, I would film with those t-shirts. I think I put out a picture of me and my friends um, with those t-shirts on, you know, and this is my tribe, these are my friends, you know. And I would say, you know, my tribe is dope. And someone has commented on a video saying, this is so obvious that you're trying to sell your merch. Uh, it's kind of sickening, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this is not advertised. Something about, you know, this is spirituality. It's not about advertising. And I'll, I reply to this person, I, I haven't, I'm not selling those t-shirts, you know. <laughs> and then this person replied saying, I know what I'm talking about. I can see clearly you're going to be doing it because I have been working um, somehow connected to merch for a really long time. So see, yeah. They've been working there. They've been doing it. So this is not on my perspective. You know? yeah. they, they got fed up and now they hate seeing that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. But these are very clear examples, you know, when it's coming from someone else. Well, then there can be those kind of mixed ones where you're like, is that, is that common actually coming after me? Or is it just someone's opinion? Because it's very, um, I don't know if you've noticed, it's very difficult to actually know when someone what kind of voice tone it is through the comments you know sometimes someone can just be you know venting in a comment and i would reply saying okay vent you know it's good to vent sometimes but then some would just be very bitter you know and then that bitterness would go on other people too because other people would join in and i'm like "I, i really don't want this bitterness here it's fine to vent it's fine to be angry like there's nothing bad about it but when it becomes like a, already a, like a chain, this is not a place for it, you know? Exactly. And I think what's important, too, is just being aware of that, you know, because when we do want to comment on somebody's video or, you know, we get a comment from them, like, just try to be compassionate because there's a lot of miscommunication that happens all the time. Like, Think if something offends you or triggers you, you know, realize like, okay, take a step back. Maybe they meant something completely different and I just can't see their perspective and I can't understand. And, and, you know, um, I think when we, when we apply that perspective more and try to be like, well, maybe I don't get it and that's okay. Maybe I don't get what they're saying. Like there was a guy I follow and for a long time he was helping me so much. He's a spiritual leader. He's pretty big. And then for a while, his stuff wasn't helping me, but I felt like, you know, maybe it's just, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Like, I felt like some, you know, a couple of things he said were, it seemed offensive, but I thought, I didn't feel like his energy was offensive. Cause I'm, so I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll come back to him. And that, and I didn't stop following him. Now I'm following him again. And sometimes the things really resonate and I really understand. And sometimes I don't because his mind is just so open yeah. that it's hard to follow. Um, but I, I don't, I don't like get mad at him or like, you know, yeah. offended or, you know, say, you know, what you're saying is wrong because I, I probably just don't get it. I don't get what he's saying. Or maybe I do. And, you know, that didn't serve me. And I leave it there and I wait for a better video to come that that does resonate for me and helps me. Yeah. And, and that's a very good point. You know, in order to get the message, you have to somehow have gone through it. You know, how can you get the taste of a meal you haven't actually tasted, you know? So <laughs> 
too. And I think that's that's fine. Falling in and out of people, it happens. You know, we we come back to each other because oh, I went through this. Now I know what it means. Because mm-hmm. before I had no clue what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So point. It's not about getting mad at people, but I also believe, you know, uh, there is a lot of um, people that I know that they are afraid to reply in the comment section and they would just delete the comments because those are very like offensive comments for them or they're like, I can't reply to it. I'm like, but why can't you reply? This is your platform, you know? I think, again, there is one more, one more thing that we should talk about. It's okay to reply. <laughs> In spiritual community, you have to, you know, send back rainbows and unicorns. Nah, you know, maybe you are this person's karmic lesson that day. You don't know, you know, if you're going to get everything in and if you can't express yourself, so what is the point really? Obviously being very conscious of what is the situation. Yes, yes. Using your discernment and then trying to bring compassion, you know, into the situation, you know, I think is so important too. Um, treat others how you want to be treated yeah you know that's how that's something that always has stuck with me over the years the golden rule baby (laughs) oh i love it i love it okay let's go back to um the blockages topic yeah is that is that okay you want to talk about that for a little bit okay um because we you know when we're reading tarot or in any kind of spiritual lens or leader can talk about, you know, oh, it's a heart chakra blockage and a, and a throat chakra blockage or, you know, and, and I still deal with some symptoms of physical pain. And like this past weekend, I had pain throughout my whole neck and it was so bad. Like I could barely like move it anywhere. And so I'm like, oh, what is this like emotion? What is this energy? Like, you know, is this, is this some negative energy, you know, in my body? And, um, and, and maybe sometimes it is, and maybe, you know, you can sit with yourself and you can, you can talk to yourself and, you know, find it like, okay, what is this? Like, I'll say, you know, I'll set an intention, like, okay, body, I'm going to listen. What is the emotion tied to this physical pain? And I think that can be very powerful, but other times it's, it's not a blockage. It can just be, you know, it could be maybe something releasing and in the process of releasing, because a lot of the times when we learn something uh, spiritual, we have a shift in our mentality. Um, our physical body takes a little bit longer to catch up to our to our mental body and our spiritual body. Um, that's, that's how I feel anyways. That, that's just my perspective of what's happened through my healing journey is sometimes the physical body needs more time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and saying, you know, not putting pressure on yourself like, oh, you know, this must be a blockage in my throat chakra, right? Because it's my neck. I'm not speaking my truth. What do I need to speak up about? Do I need to make a video? Like what's, you know what I mean? Getting out of that because I think that can be a mentality. People, you know, um, if they're dealing with depression or maybe a stomach problem, they're like, you know, knowing that you are clearing, you are healing, you're on the right path and, and having more patience and more nurture, like nurturing yourself more during those times it's just it's just really important because it's kind of like you know how you would treat a child like if a child's having a problem with something you know you wouldn't just be like okay we need to fix it right now like we need to get it out we need to do this you would nurture them and love them and help them through the process and i think applying that same mentality to our own bodies is is you know i think underrated because we're always I mean, that, that we're all always in a hurry, but I know speaking from my personal truth, sometimes I just want to get there and I want to get, yeah. you know, feeling better. And Yeah. So when it, when it comes to, I agree with you fully, when it comes to body, bodily sensations, um, I see it in a couple of different ways. Yes, it can be. I take it as a message, not more so as maybe a blockage itself. Okay, if my, yeah. if my throat is hurting or something. I will just run through very quickly that week. Have I spoken my truth? If there's something that I'm holding back, you know? If not, we, we humans, we can simply just have a cold. I think we have to be balanced and know which one is which because we can create a lot of stuff being in spiritual world. And I've noticed people doing that, which it gets them all the way up there where they forget how to be human, you know? We do have bodies, it hurts. But then some other times, if we're talking about time blockages, let's say, I, I've noticed it many times, and I know probably you did too in my life, if I'm working on a project for a really long time and it's not going 
as I want it to go, if I feel like time is off, if I can't get to the finish line, it's just very slow. I take it as a message, hey, kind of, you know, take that time to focus on your relationships, either family, your private life, rest. And every time I do that, I would note it down. I would start focusing on maybe socializing also, you know, doing things that give me a break. The moment I do that within two days, I have or a brilliant idea or I have 20 clients and I'm like, oh my God, you know. So it's very important yeah. to know that those kind of blockages are like your, your attention is being brought to, you know, somewhere else. Like focus on that now and, you know, jumping in between these two. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the thing I've noticed in my life. I don't know if you did, but it works for me every time. I have in little bits, but you really opened my eyes and you really explained that beautifully, I think. So I'm really glad that you just said that because um, that's something that, yeah, I, I do struggle with and I, and I know that, but you just said it in a very simple way that really resonated with me. And I feel like it's probably going to resonate with a lot of people because that's so true. Because I feel like I'm that in that space in my life right now because I have been fortunate enough to spend more time with my family. And I feel like I keep getting messages from spirit that's like, just relax, spend more time with your family because I am planning to move to Australia and I'm, I'm going to be very far from the States. I'm not going to be back here all the time. And I, I am close with my family. And so, you know, having that extra time to just relax, you know, it, it, but I think it can be hard when we have so many goals and, and being in separation from my person that was, you know, my, my boyfriend that lives in Australia, it's, it's really hard sometimes because it's been like almost nine months now since I've seen him and, and I get really sad and, and I, I accept that and I let myself cry sometimes and I feel in that energy, but I feel like, you know, this is such a beautiful time that I have now that I'm back in Michigan from California um, yeah. to reconnect and really, you know, build a strong relationship with my family. And so, you know, applying what you said in this situation for me is, is something that I'm still kind of learning and accepting and, and, yeah. it, and I understand it, but I think understanding something and really um, integrating it into your life can be two different things. Yeah, it can be tough. <clears throat> Excuse me. really tough at first because you really don't know why this is not going the way you want it to until you're like, okay, even though, you know, you're working on an amazing project, you're so passionate about it and you want to finish it. Let's say yeah. if that's a painting, for example, and yeah. you're like, hey, this is, I've lost creativity, but I really need to finish it by now. You know, it's very difficult to say to yourself, I'm going out with my, with my friends or I'm going to visit my family, you know, just yeah. drop that. But I think it acts a bit like a refreshment, you know, and your whole mind goes like, oh, okay, came back with a different perspective. Yeah, yeah. And I think too, as we're learning these new perspectives, you can kind of learn it and then be in it. And then the next day, it's like your old self or your old habits, your ego can kind of like resist you on it and it's kind of like you know it's not just like you integrate something and you learn it it's a it's a process I think yeah. it's a it's a whole journey you know it's a it's a whole journey because a goal we think that okay I'm gonna achieve that goal I'm gonna be happy right after that goal usually what people do they achieve a goal they forget even to pat the, themselves on the back or to celebrate that goal and just take a moment and they already have a next goal you know within the same second you're like okay now I have to do and it's just go, 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 go. But where is the journey? Where is the celebration? Where is the appreciation? You know, that's why we can't I think in many cases, that's why we can't really be happy as people sometimes because we all focus on the future goals and we don't really take that time to appreciate it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Living in the moment. One yeah. Of the, one of I, the trickiest things. <laughs> yeah. Living in the present. This is so true. This is so true. I, I literally catch myself sometimes, you know, I'm making a coffee and I'm thinking about 20 things and I'm like, no, 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 you are making a coffee right now, you know, <laughs> we're going to drink coffee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's why I think it's important too to like implement practices that help you be in the moment. Like for mm -hmm. me, the biggest thing, which I'm so happy to be in like back in now, because, um, I love yoga, like hot yoga that just inspires me. I get so many creative ideas. I, I, I can free my mind. Most classes, some classes a little bit harder, but, um, 
you know, during the pandemic, I didn't have that. And I had to find other ways, which I did, you know, I, I did find other ways, but this is like the best way for me. And I think finding to the best ways for you to, uh, in integrate it so at least like if you can't be in the present moment all day you have at least a designated like for me it's an hour of yoga I'm yeah. gonna be in the present I'm gonna focus on my breathing and it's just it helps so much it's a really good point I think most people they cannot be in the present moment the whole day it's I, I do believe it's nearly impossible you know yeah. Yeah. it happens that Unless you're three years old like yeah, yeah. That's yeah. very true, you know, and having that hour for yourself or what helps other people is having your own routine, wherever you be, especially if you travel a lot or if you are somewhere else that doesn't feel like home, just having the same routine like you'd have at home, it puts you in that mindset of, okay, this is my comfort, this is my routine, I recognize that in this environment and I think that works similar way, like, I'm here and now, you know, and then I can go on, on to ventures and do everything that needs to be done. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. Okay. Um, should we go back to spiritual gifts? Yeah, let's do it. Because I feel like that was like the main topic at the beginning. We haven't really touched on it a lot yet. And I think, I think that could be, well, we kind of did. We kind of did. We did. Yeah. But maybe we can give examples. I don't know if you came across certain people who would do the same thing and how they do it different differently to you. So maybe that would be an interesting well, story. There is one thing I touched on um, and I touched on it when I did a, the live with Kino Tarot the other day, but I, I feel like it's an important message. So I think I'm going to just give the example again um, and then maybe we can find other examples from that one. But, um, you know, when I started channeling and I started reading tarot, um, a lot of my messages, and I don't, I don't know exactly how it is for you, but they come really within, like really deep within. And I know some people when they channel, it's like something outside of them. Like it's, you know, outside their, their right ear or their right side. I always feel like it's the right, but maybe some people it's the left. Um, you know, it's this, it's this energy and they can tell that it's, that it's like a guide or something working with them. And, and for a while I thought that that's how it had to be for me. I'm like, why, why is it, why is it coming within? And, and I came to this interesting realization and, and this was just my perspective. I don't know if this is, you know, it's neither right or wrong, but, um, I think, you know, for me in my life, I have a hard time trusting myself. And I think that's why my gifts come from inside. And then mm -hmm. some people I think have a hard time trusting outside of them. And um, like, I trust too much in other people. Like I trust too much and I don't trust enough within. And I think some people are the opposite. And maybe somebody that hears their messages from the outside has a harder time trusting other people. And maybe that's why they get, because part of our soul's purpose is part of our growth. It's part of our learning and it's going to be challenging. It's not supposed to be like super easy. Um, but that's just one example that I think is, is really powerful and beautiful of like how you could have a similar gift and maybe even channel similarly, but the messages come in a different way. Yeah. Because for me, it only, and like I said this multiple times, like it almost feels like I'm making it up when the messages come out. Like I feel like I'm literally just making something up. And, and that was really hard. It still is hard sometimes, but really hard in the beginning because it didn't make sense. I thought channelers like heard something or had like some sort of vision or like, you know, I thought it was really profound. But when I started these, you know, saying these stories or these messages, it was resonating to every single person, right, that I was channeling for. So it was like, you know, it wasn't a coincidence at that point. It was it was too, too much knowledge to like not be right. Um, and that continues to show in, in my practice and in my channeling for confirmation for myself, right? <laughs> but and I don't know how how is it for you when you when you channel like what? How does it feel, especially when you first started and, and what do you see something? Do you hear, or is it just like, for me, it's just like a feeling and it's just like a, I don't know. It's hard. It's still even hard for me to explain. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that you touched on it. I did speak about that with a client and she asked me this question yesterday and it made me think. She's like, how, like, are you connecting to a guide or an ancestor for the messages to come through? And I said to her, no one asked me this question because I never connected to anything that is outside of me, really. Every time I did a reading, I didn't intentionally think, like, my guides, please, you know, da -da -da, or my ancestor. And I said to her, when I started doing readings, I started doing readings, me, myself, and my tarot cards, you know, or the messages I'm receiving. So 
it was interesting. For, I know that we are being guided, you know, we get the messages from up there. But what I also wanted to touch on, some people, I don't know if you've noticed, they give um, almost all of their power to the beings that they connect to. You know, my, my angel said this, my guide said yeah. this, my this. Yeah. Well, we need to understand that we are, none of us are above really, because without you, they don't have a voice. You know, and I think, I don't know why, like I never, I'm a bit like you. I am with myself when I do a reading here and now. If I'm doing, I don't know, something for myself, let's say, if I need a message for myself, I would then say, hey, you know, <laughs> tell me or show me a vision, what it is that I need to know. Yeah. And I think for me, reading tarot cards, it's weird uh, because when I channel, I channel without cards when I do tarot, just do tarot. You know, I know there is channeling in it too, but if I channel, I like nothing with me and I just kind of become this blank canvas and I allow everything to come in. So sometimes that would be a sound, sometimes that would be a sensation I get on my body, sometimes it's appealing, but most of the time, if talking about tarot cards, it's the same like you, it's coming through as a very strong feeling or visions. So those visions are also very strange to explain because you see an image in a tarot card and sometimes for me it's a bit like highlights. There is so much going on in the pictures and some things are highlighted to me and I have to put them together. You know, pay attention to the flower here, this guy here and these shoes, you know. So it's, it's very interesting and I think yeah. every time it's different. Every client you do it for, I don't know if you noticed, you would use those different sensations too. So yeah. it's been a very personal in a way mm -hmm. yeah no I love it I like that you said that and and it made me think of too like how other people channel because I remember my friend got a reading done by this medium and um, she's been doing it for a very long time it sounded like it was a very powerful session for her this was out in California after I'd been back in Michigan and uh, she she uses tarot but she flips through them really fast as she channels so she barely looks at them but yeah. she uses them and I thought that was interesting because I never heard of a tarot reader like barely looking at the cards, just kind of like shuffling through them. Mm -hmm. And and it's interesting because she need she it, it helps her, but mm -hmm. she just like gets glimpses of it. And mm -hmm. and it's it's the way she channels. So like I thought that was really cool. I'm like, oh, I've never even so it's just so different for everybody. And I think, you know, maybe, you know, if you have a tarot reader you like or if you have a psychic you like or something, you know, maybe using their methods, but then seeing what works and what doesn't, you know? Like yeah. trying different things out. I know a lot of mediums you would see, especially those um, like Alison Dubois, they scribble, you know, they take them, they take notes, and they just go. And I think what is interesting that people need to hold something, you know, with mediums especially. Like for me, I, for me, you see, it's the opposite. I don't hold anything. All I need to have is a name written down of a person that we're going to connect to. And... I never actually tried, you know, scribbling or using, you know, like doing something with my hands. So mm -hmm. that would be interesting to try that out. Yeah. And it's interesting because I talked to that medium uh, also and I said to her, you know, when I started mediumship, I didn't need any objects, I didn't need any cards. And I said to her, sometimes I feel like I need to use cards. I'm all almost would be guided to take cards. And again, now that was her perspective. You see, I could either take it or not. She's like, you know, what I think about divination tools, I put mediumship here and divination tools um, should be used a bit separate, not as the mediumship reading. But again, she says, this is how I feel about it. Because you see why? Because I think she's not as familiar with tarot herself because yeah said one word and she was like it can turn into um, a predictive reading and how I see tarot for me here and now is the most powerful how are you feeling right now what to do now you know it's all about self-development for me and not as much as what's going to happen in 20 years because it's up to you really so there again there's that different perspective she goes so what I would do if I would have tarot cards and I would do kind of in between, I'd set an intention that, okay, almost tell this person now I'm going to be using tarot cards so that I split those two energies. 
for me, I remember when I was doing Skype reading with someone, um, I think we were reading for her mom. And uh, there was one question she wanted to ask her mom about where the family should celebrate something. And that was some, somehow connected to her mom. And the moment she said that, I turned to my table and one deck literally highlighted for me. I'm like, I'm, I took that deck, I pulled the card out. And in that imagery, that was an urban deck. Uh, there was a representation, a, a scene from um, New York, you know, yellow cabs and buildings and stuff. And I started describing her that, that imagery, what it made me feel like, you know, where, where it could be held possibly. And she goes, oh, my God, my mom's from New York. She wants me to go to New York, you know? Wow, and yeah. They show me, like, and that is, you know, some people would, um, if they would take that advice as an absolute, like, maybe it's, it's not okay to do both, you know? Um, if it sits with you well, you can separate these two things. But because I don't take tarot as predictive only, and I think it works for me best here and now, or what to do tomorrow, you know, not very far away. And I approach tarot a bit differently. And I think that's how they work with me rather than... But again, spirit knows much more than we do. They know what we think even about, and they show us what we need to do, you know. So I had quite powerful um, readings when I uh, started incorporating tarot, actually. And those were very much like, bang, 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 you know, like, oh my God, what is going on? But I like to kind of channel first. I want to tune in and see, and I take notes how this person makes me feel like before I use anything at all. And then, do that. But again, you know, I've seen this guy um, who I think he's over 40 years old. So he's been doing that for a while, I know, because um, he's really good at it. He only uses tarot as mediumship, you know, he only draws cards. So it's it's different to, to each of us. And I I, I think our, our readings are similar in that sense that you talked about how like it's not always about predicting the future because the future is so tied into the present and the past. So yeah. a lot of times I read such into the present energy and it connects to the past. And that's how we that's how we change our future is by changing what's happening now or by giving insights. And that's what's yeah. I think that's more powerful. Like you could get a reading sure where you're just like, OK, this is coming. This is coming. This is coming. And this is coming, you know, yeah. which is, you know, and maybe that's what somebody needs to hear at that point. But I think. When I get a reading, I almost want them to connect to my present energy and say, like, okay, this is why, you know, yeah. this is what's happening in your life. And this is this is connected to the past with your father or, like, your mother. Or, you know, I think that's so beautiful. And another thing I wanted to touch on, too, is um, I noticed in my readings, like, you know, sometimes I, I use the tarot cards at first. And then I have some readings where I literally don't even use them the last half of the session. Like, I might pull them out. And sometimes, like, at first, when I started doing this, I thought that it was weird because I'm like, this person's paying for a tarot reading. I need to incorporate the cards. You know, I almost put this, like, weird pressure on myself. <laughs> and then I was like, no, Megan, like, you just don't need them, right? Like, you're you're such in their energy and you, you've got it going. Like, it's almost like getting this momentum going that, like, now the messages are just flowing. And I don't, I don't need, like, I don't need to use them. Like, yeah. and that happens sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's very true. Really That's very true. Uh, the same, like, for that mediumship reading I've done, like, I've pulled a couple of cards, and then from then on, whatever she'd ask me, I'd almost, like, hear the answer given to me, like, here, you know, like, no, yes. But it yes. came to not as a, as a sound, but as a feeling, like, she's off with it, you know? And I know that this is the spirit that I'm talking to, you know, of deceased, because they feel very different to what you would feel while doing a tarot reading, you know, with yourself. It's almost like someone is telling you what to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I stopped using cards too, yeah. But I guess it's all about what feels right to you, in a yeah. sense. There's no wrong way. There's no right way. There's, you know, I mean, I read cards all the time that I don't, they'll come up through a reading and I've, I've had this deck, you know, for months and I've never read that card that way. I've never gotten yeah. that message and it's, mm -hmm. and it might have nothing to do with what I learned on paper from that card, you know, from what I studied. And, and, you know, I think it's great to study in the beginning. I think it's, it helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but over time you just realize that the, the meanings for the cards, they shift and they change and it's like, Oh, <laughs> that's a new one. That's a new message. And a lot of the times, too, I think you'll realize this, but I think, you know, and this kind of came through recently, like, not too long ago when you were talking, like, I feel like when we're, when we're going through our life, if, 
you know, especially on the spiritual journey or before we're on the spiritual journey, I think like our guides and our angels and, and the, you know, the energies that work with us, source energy kind of um, have us go through these experiences to learn and almost to prep us into these teachers so that mm-hmm. when we start to channel a lot of the channels, the messages we're channeling our experiences that we've been through because the people we're attracting into our life have similar energy. So like, you know, I might be like saying something to somebody that, uh, you know, I went through a year ago or I went through two years ago and it's almost like, you know, am, am I sharing, is this, is this channeled energy or is this just my experience? But it's, it's the same. It's all yeah. connected. We're all one and we're one with our spirit guys, just like we're one with each other. Like yeah. we're not so separated. It's all, it's all one. It's just, it's that exactly. illusion, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And that, that's the very good point, you know, how, how could a person explain why certain things are happening if they've never been through what you've been through? And I think that's why it's important to know that you've been drawn to this tarot reader or this, I don't know, mentor, because they've been through this already. Yeah. Yeah. And, been- it, yeah, and, and I, earlier when you said, too, about, um, you know, not giving too much of your power away to your spirit guide, I did that in the beginning. Like, I didn't want to take any credit for it because I thought that I would like lose my gifts or something like I have to like this is Archangel Michael or this is this guide or guy. like it's not me I'm just the channel I'm just the body that flows the messages and I think I think it's important to give yourself credit you know I think it's like that balance of like saying yes I work with all this beautiful energy around me but it's it is me and I do have this power and I'm yeah I'll show you your power and you know it's just having that mindset yeah, because that's how, like, you are the one who owns the intuition, right? You're the one who owns that. So this is something that you put together with the spirit messages. But how I like to see it, you know, when you're shuffling tarot cards, um, a specific card would show itself to you. So I see it almost as, you know, kind of like to put a spin of science to it too, you know, gra- gravity, you've probably seen me do, you know, okay, let's let gravity do the work, you know, because I... I like they they like to work with energies. That's why it's very easy for guides for spirits to influence tech because it's all about energy, right? So I like to say that hey, they almost like I have a magician card and I think my um, angel deck where it shows a person working in a lab and there's an angel kind of holding their hands, helping them out. So I like to see it that way, you know, like. You yeah. are using your hands, but there is also another energy to it that is going to show you what you need to see. Mm, it's like being a part of a team. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. That. <laughs> I like that. That's a good, that's a good imagery. Interesting. So is there anything we haven't touched on, Megan? Uh, I feel like we did good. I, I forgot to start timing it. Like, what do we start a half an hour ago or 45 43, minutes? Three. 57 oh. minutes. I feel like that's perfect timing. Yeah. I didn't want to go too long. So is there anything else you wanted to touch base on? No, I think we touched on everything, really. And I really love the examples and other people being incorporated in this. Mm-hmm. That was amazing. Yeah, so uh, you guys watching, uh, comment down below, like, your spiritual gifts or if you're just discovering them or, if, like, you read anything in a unique way that you think maybe is is weird or like yeah. special or whatever. Like, let that. us know. Like, let's start a conversation about this and and kind of like you know embrace each other's uniqueness because we're all on this beautiful path here to connect and we're all very similar, but we're all very different. And um, like, I'm still exploring my spiritual gifts as I go and and my unique abilities. And I, I told I told my spirit guides recently, like I was I was you know, setting my intentions. I was like, okay, I'm ready to level up. I'm ready for more gifts. <laughs> and then something came through in a reading that was really powerful. That was really intense. And I was like, doubting myself. And I was like, maybe I'm not ready. Like <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot. It's challenging. Um, but no, I am ready. I am ready. Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> uh, but yeah, share below. And then also like, if there's anything we touched on that you have questions about or any other topics you'd like us to discuss, because we like making these kind of videos for you guys. Let us know. Yeah. All and right. I'll catch you all and I'll catch you, Megan, uh, very soon. <laughs> Sounds good. Bye. Bye.